intelligent machines have always fascinated me ever since I was a little boy. At, 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 at first came up through Asimov books and science fiction movies. You know, usually science fiction anticipates what we expect in future decades. This fascination brought me where I am today, working with robots to support children that suffer from ASD, Autism Spectrum Disorder. But before robots, I studied computer science, and this was so amazing in the beginning. Amazing because I realized that the computer would become the bane of future robots and of future itself. Let me briefly tell you how it started. I bought myself a fun toy in 2010, a kind of drone that could be programmed to follow people, colored objects, and so on. I had a wonderful time playing with it. Then I researched a software that could help me to easily program my drone. I ran into a French company that had all sorts of components that I need use. I need to, to, for use it. It was 2012. I met an incredible robot that caught my attention. It was a robotic telepresence device. The next step lead to research other humanoid robots used for different, different social endeavors, and my brother and I began to work on this fascinating project. Part of it is the robot that you just saw is our son, or something like that. <laughs> my story at this point begs a question. Are social robots ready for the mass market, or there's still something close inside laboratories? But before thinking about that, how could we use them properly? In which way could they be deployed? I've done a lot of research on that, and I found that some interesting applications were being tested in labs for the autism treatment. An interesting footnote. In the USA, there is one child every 68 who suffer from this pathology, and one every 150 just in Italy. Yes, social robots fit well with those applications because they are more attractive to children with autism more than human beings. Most children with autism are not able to read human expression nor recognize emotion, but with robots and technological devices, which are more attractive to them, a therapist can create a privileged communication channel between a robot and an autistic child, ever better than just through personal communication. In 2013, we began to research together with the CNR therapists in Messina the response to a first approach that autistic children and non-autistic children had with robots. We found, surprisingly, that the approach was the same in both cases. Please watch. The next step was to notice how the child enjoying playing and interacting with the robot. A similar research had been carried out, among others, by Dr. Mike Stanton of Cambridge University in the UK in 2008. I quote him, More social interaction and better verbal communication, about 30% increase, have been observed when a robot was present in the same room. The improvement was not only noticeable in interaction with the robot, but in a subsequent interactions with their parents and therapists. Starting from that point, we created a software platform that could simplify the use of robots, and more specifically, that could be used by therapists and facilitators to apply a therapy to autism treatment in a very easy way. And this was the right place to start. So we bought our first social robots with the aim of discovering how it could be programmed and what were the real possibilities and limitations of that technology. We discovered that there were a lot of limitations. 
So we had to think about optimizing the use of it and how to make it suitable for anybody who wants to use a therapeutic tool for autism treatment. That's not a simple task and is actually a big challenge for three main reasons. First of all, there is no standard method in the autism treatment nor a metric to evaluate if a therapy goes well or not. This happens because autism is a spectrum of pathologies and not an only well-defined pathology. Second, medical therapists and parents do not have any knowledge of robotics at all. So we have to create new methodology of interaction, new interface, new paradigms. Third, all the problems that rely on the new technology, hardware and software that are an early, st early stage of development, and need strong testing and optimization tasks, and fingers crossed, obviously. The lack of some standardization in social robotics is a big technological issue today. In fact, the social robo robotics market today is more like the computer market in the 70s. Few competitors, high costs, not a mass product. But we think that this will change in the next 10 years we think social robotics will be the next big thing after the computing mobile market. During my last 15 years of working in the ICT market, I was so impressed at how technology changed our lives and the way we perceive reality now. But the most important thing I noticed is how technology has changed our society and how everybody has been empowered by its use. The fact that knowledge has become active rather than passive. I was fully immersed in programming and computing for 15 years until I resigned my job last May to dedicate my undivided attention and know-how to my startup. I'm working full-time together with my brother on this project for over helping autistic children through advanced technology. At the beginning of the last century, the way to access knowledge was based on books, you know, and teachers plus direct experience. So a very small number of people had access to basic knowledge like reading and writing. At the end of the 20th century, and more specifically, at the beginning of the 21st, this completely changed. From the beginning of our species, about two and, um, two and a half million years ago, our brain has evolved and we can see this looking at the tools that our ancestor created. Think about the tools from the primitive age to today, from the first stone tools to the robot which is actually discovering planet Mars. Not just considering the material aspect of this evolution, but considering the spirit and the passion the humans put into it. And more specifically, the idea they had to create something that could reach or do things that humans couldn't do themselves. My contention is the fact that a robot may be better at communicating with a little autistic child, for example, or better equipped to go save lives after an earthquake, means they are co-workers, they are going to be companions rather than competitors. And that's what robots are. Thank you very much.